Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capsule in Conversation with. I'm Natalie Anderson and I'll be your host for the next half an hour along with our gorgeous fashion editor Anna Muse and our super sassy travel expert Lindsay Thomas. And this week we are joined by our very special guest, the multi-talented Paula Lane. So sit back, relax and get ready to join in with our conversation. And we are back. So let's say a big hello to our lovely ladies. She's sashayed into the studio today. It's our fashion editor, Anna Muse. Hello, Anna. How are you? <laughs> hello, Natalie. I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I'm very, very well. Good. And she's our girl about and travel industry expert. It's our Lindsay Thomas. Hello, love. What have you been up to? Hello, love. How are you? I'm, I'm all good, right. Thanks. Yeah, I've had a bit of a crazy couple of weeks, you know, dashing around Yorkshire as usual. Oh, bless you, all over. All over and everywhere, yeah. Been in A&E with my son. Um, I went up to a wonderful place called Telfit Farm last week as well. Telfit it looked lovely, Farm. I saw lovely. it on your Instagram. Yeah. yeah, gorgeous. Well, I'm fresh from the hijinks of the hit musical Kinky Boots. We've got today's very <laughs> special guest, actress and all-round gorgeous girl, Paula Lane. Hello, Hello ladies. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. Um, yeah, a little bit shattered. But, um, yeah, I'm thrilled to be here, surrounded by all these gorgeous Yorkshire accents. Oh, yay! Because <laughs> you've just finished on Kinky Boots. I have. I After have. how long? It will have been 16 months in oh total. My. 16 months? 16 months, yeah. 16 <clears throat> long months. But and I've enjoyed every second. Oh, well, that's good. But are you, are you feeling particularly, like, really tired now? Um, yeah, it was it was pretty grueling. Um, eight shows a week on average. I think it was wow. four hundred and twenty five performances. We um, oh, wow. we kicked out <laughs> yeah, in those heels. It's been a roller coaster. Mm. I can't lie. Any mother as well, you know, juggling parenthood, I think will tell you. People ask me, how do you make it work? And I don't really know how I've made it work, but we did it. Yeah. And we had the schedule sort of, um, you know, um, stuck under the calendar. And every week my husband had tick one off. And and then it just sort of like happened and came and went. And Because you know, Tom's an actor as well, isn't he? He is, yeah. So I think we're very much aware of how um, the other person's feeling. Yeah. So I think you just have to kind of roll with the highs and, and the lows as well. But don't you think that's so important to any job, but particularly with what you're doing and being away from home a lot, having someone who understands that and can support you, it's so important, isn't it? Yeah, hugely, hugely. And, and I have been a bit of a, a wreck at times on this job. I've shed mm. more tears than, mm. um, you know, than I ever thought I would. And like we've had people naturally leave and I feel a bit of an ice queen because I'm like, I'm not going to cry at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've cried so much on the job, like leaving my children. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we've achieved so much and I think they're really proud. I can see that the children are oh. proud of me as well and fascinated by the stage, fascinated by the whole get up of it and, you know, where I'm off to next. And, and they've been with me a little bit on the road as well. Do so you get to wear your costumes? <laughs> no, but they have had a good, they've had a good feel of the boots. <laughs> yeah, very quickly, you know, wipe away them little sticky fingerprints. Because <laughs> for anybody that hasn't seen Kinky Boots, it is actually amazing. It's such a spectacle. I mean, I shrieked with like just amazement when I watched it back in leads it was absolutely incredible I was like wow the sparkle and the shoes and the everything I was just so thrilled by it all so yeah for anybody it's just an, an amazing show to see and and for you to have been part of just like you say must have been amazing yeah it really has been and I'm, I'm a tiny part of it you know when you when you cobble together like the lighting and the costumes and the set everything mm -hmm. but all that you know combined makes it what it is um, and I just feel so blessed that I was able to kind of, you know, have the opportunity for such a long time. How long does it actually take you to learn your lines? It depends, really, I guess, what you're I'm, what I'm you're always absolutely on. amazed by <laughs> actors and actresses and how they actually manage to learn the lines, because I can't even, you know, string a sentence together half the time. <laughs> you do. It's muscle memory. It you is, isn't yourself. it? Yeah, yeah, it's very much muscle memory, and like, it depend, like you say, depending on what job it is, whether if it's a telly job, it's it's a different muscle. It's kind of a lot quicker, and you you, you hold it, and then you get rid of it quickly. When it's a show, like you, yeah. you, you kind of, and you and you're allowed to play around with it a little bit more as well. Um, you know, there's different ways of playing it, and yeah, there's a whole host of things. But I think for stage, the quicker the better. But they're a little bit more lenient. You know, you, you've got a bit more time to play with. I mean, for me personally, I have to have things like um, beetroot juice for my memory, and like eat a lot of salmon and omega three. That sounds oh, absolutely really? mad, but for me personally, when I'm on a show, I have lots of things that I try to to use to help me with my memory. Do you? Not so much my memory, but I've turned into <laughs> this honey, lemon, garlic. I've got all these vitamins going on, like apple cider vinegar. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've actually 
turned into Apple a... Apple cider vinegar, that's uh, oh, well, the I, next big thing, isn't it, apparently? I've bought well, some of that, but I've, yeah, I don't really know what to do it's with it. It's got to be organic, apparently. <laughs> you can't just go and buy it from Morris, you know. Oh, can you not? Oh, I've got it wrong. It stinks, yeah. Does it? But a bit of hot water, a little bit of honey with it. Um, oh, I'm going to try that. Yeah. I've it's had it for right. like ages. It's an acquired taste, but I'm a bit gross. When I was a, a young girl, I used to drink the vinegar off the silver skin onions. Oh. So it's nothing to me. I'm like getting nothing. Oh no, I get that. I get that totally. My gran used to uh, she used to chop up an onion and put it in vinegar and soak it. Then we'd have it with our roast beef on a Sunday. Oh, it was delicious. Oh no, yeah. oh. not for me either. Yeah. I'm like looking You're at you right. two, thinking they're in agreement. I'm like, oh, onions. that's a bit weird. <laughs> no, I'll just have them, you know, with a little bit of gravy. Thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, going back to the show. So when I watched it, one of the things that I was absolutely astounded by was the accent. Because it's a very particular accent that you have, isn't it? Is it? Where, it's, where is it it's from? It's Northampton. Northampton, but it's it, so particular. Yeah, it's very particular. I'm so flattered that you've said that you were impressed with my accent because actually it is so particular and it's quite tricky. Mm-hmm. And I've never really felt like I've had it on point the whole time, but maybe I did. I don't know. Oh, it was brilliant. Um, there's certain vowels that they kick out, like gooing. Oh, go on. Give, give, give us uh, a bit of Northamptonshire. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, Finny when Charlie Price. Oh wow! It's, it's like a, it's a little bit kind of there's a little bit of West Country in there. Then you've got some London yeah. vowels. You also have a hint of Northern vowels yeah. in there. Um, how did you prepare for that? We like, had a dialect coach. You had a coach, um, right? And then you know all that weird stuff that comes in with it, like um, <laughs> lab and training, which I'm a huge fan of. But um, if you could have witnessed what was going on in the room that day, people might think, you know, wow, this is uh, quite intense. Um, playing around with all these vowels and your body movements and things. Um, yeah, there's there's so much that goes into learning an accent, and we just had um, yeah a really brilliant vocal coach called Richard Ryder, mm-hmm. and he came and visited us a couple of times, and and yeah, just helped us along with it really. Well, I have to say, I was definitely like. <laughs> Wow, because that, like you see, you can't pinpoint it. It's so specific for mm. if you go and see the show, it's very, very specific. And I was just like, oh, I don't think I'd be able to do that. But it was really, really good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you obviously been on tour and I've done it myself. So I know like it is a real strain with the children. It's very difficult. Um, how did you find that? Like being, you know, in hotel rooms or in digs but by yourself? And did you use FaceTime? Did you, how did you connect with the kids? Um, uh, yeah, we did a lot of FaceTime. Um, although I used to find that the children, they got quite bored with that. Mm. You know, as great as technology is, and they're used to it now with their, with their tablets and stuff like that, they'd be like, nah, do you know what, mummy? I'm not really for this today. Like, they want you there in person. Mm. Yeah. Don't get if it, they don't get it in really. person, then they're not really that fussed. Mm. Penny, a little bit more so than Arthur, because she, she's very much a mummy's girl. Um, but I just I just had to take it mentally week by week. I'm a bit of a fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants kind of girl, and I, I actually quite enjoyed living out of a suitcase. Yeah. I know it sounds a bit bizarre, but I liked the excitement of it. Um, when I left Coronation Street, I didn't work for the best part of a year after having Penny. So I was very much ready to dedicate myself mm. to a role. And I think that helped. Mm, yeah, I think I also, I mean, working in travel myself and, you know, I've traveled all over the world and spent, can you see how my voice goes a little bit posh when I go into work? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> travel, you know, I, I, I mean, up until recently, I'd go for, you know, 10, 12, I know it might not be a, as, as long a period as, as you, Paula, but certainly 10, 12 days at a time. And it kept my marriage fresh or keeps my marriage fresh That's a little it. bit as well, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. I Just had add a um, bit of spice. Um, I, I have heard that people were sort of saying, no, it must put a strain on the marriage. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think it's a great thing yeah. to do for a marriage. I think it's yeah. true. Absence really does make the heart yeah. grow fonder and, and it has worked for us. I said, you know, we're going to be uh, killing each other after. You, know? yeah. <laughs> you have to <laughs> kind of relearn to live with each other again, <laughs> yeah. don't you? That's I know like, when I was away for a year in London and, and James was up here and we spent like, I was down there and I had a flat down there. And when, we, when I came back and I finished the job, I was, I was like, oh, we're going to have to really relearn how to live with each other again because <laughs> we're, we're so used to having our own space. But it, like you say, it's quite cool, quite exciting yeah. and different. Yeah. And, and we're used to being together so much. Like yeah. we're in a business together. We, you know, we're very much, we live in each other's pockets all the time. So I'm so, sure we'll be fine. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> so with everything else you've got going on, you've set up, it's a, is it an acting school? Yeah, it's a drama academy. Drama but, academy. Um, when I'm home, I'll be teaching some of the, dancing as well right um, okay and you yeah. run that together with your we run husband it together, yeah. so, so do you enjoy having that business as a partnership then very Does much so very much so um he's had to 
fully take the reins, mm. you know, when I've been away, which hasn't been easy for him, mm. obviously having the two children as well. But um, we've just made it work and, and it's it's our own. Like we, we've we grown it and I think that's what makes it feel so special. We don't have to answer to anybody. Mm. We put, you know, our own time and commitment into it. And um, and yeah, it, it just feels like it's our, our baby really. Yeah, that's something here that we very much are all about, isn't it? Like our own businesses and having that control over our own destiny. Mm. Something that all of us kind of together feel quite strongly about. And it's it's nice to see, you know, other, other people, other, other celebrities, actors, whoever kind of doing the same thing and just going, yeah, you know what? I'm going to take control of this just because it's so unreliable out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think... You know, naturally we have a, a passion for it because we're good at what we do. But, um, you know, I'm also into kind of like, I like I like business. I enjoy that, yeah. that side of it. And I like growing things and running things. And um, like you say, being in control. And Have you had to, have you taken any courses or anything, Paula, to sort of help you with the business side of things? Or? Um, well, it was more just like the drama training, really. And then I think the way you learn best in this industry is on the job. Yeah, And course, to be yeah. able to, you know, then sort of like give the advice to um to the students really so yeah and I'm good with kids <laughs> <laughs> she's good with them so alongside obviously the business and everything else that you do you you like a lot of fitness as well I, I see your Instagram and I'm like wow she's in Pilates and now she's doing ballet and I feel really bad like, but do you find that's time for yourself yeah definitely um and it's great for your mental health as mm. well um I have had to step off a lot on the show I couldn't really uh, do as much running because it affects your voice. Mm -hmm. um, if it was cold outside, then I'd find that, you know, I really I couldn't perform as well that evening. Um, so I really had to train myself what, what could work for me. Mm. Yoga was brilliant. Um, the show then became enough for me yeah. to, you know, in terms of fitness. But now I've finished, um, I'll be... I won't be doing too much, too many things because I do. I like a variety. You need a couple of weeks of Mauritius. <laughs> I was going to say, well, that'd be nice. Um, I'll go for the odd one after I've dropped the kids at school, and I do do um, adult ballet class, a little bit of yoga in there as well. Yeah. So, so you'll be teaching more um, at the school. So, in terms of dancing as well, then what which bits will you? Yeah. So we um, we focus on like musical theatre dance, and and I really love it because I I use my own choreography. Oh, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I love doing that I love it um, and I didn't think I ever would and then I started and I was like I've got some really good routines going I've on I've got here. some moves yeah. I can just <laughs> move out um, here <laughs> you know and, and I didn't start dancing until I was um, 16 oh, but that's I, quite late I, on really late on but I went full throttle with it um, and then just carried it on so I've, I've kind of leveled out now with the girls that used to do it when they were younger mm -hmm. you know we've kind of we're um, a level peg in now so um yeah, and I just I just really love it. So in terms of um, filming and touring schedules, it, it is very different being on set. I mean, do you do you miss Corey? I do miss it. I miss the people. Um, the schedule was very grueling. I mean, you know what it's yeah. like. Um, Can I just ask? What's it like having Gail Platt as a mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a joy. It was a joy. I loved her. I still love her. Um, I don't get to see her as often um, as I like. But, um, you know, she was she was a real mother on the job. She gave me so much advice and she watched me grow into a woman on that job. That's Helen Worth. Yeah, Helen yeah. Worth, yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, she's a real a real family um, orientated lady and she used to give us such advice. Yeah, she was a wonder. It must have been a real transition for you after leaving because you'd been on the show for so long and those people who you're spending day in day out with I know when I went from working in an office five days you know a week eight hours a day and then I went on mat leave I, I almost was like a bit lost because the people who you're interacting with and must be like a, a second family oh yeah you don't you don't get to see them yeah. how did you how um, did you cope with that? It's a very, very funny tale. I have spoken about it before because Jack and I grew very close on the job because yeah, you're married. Like you, you live and breathe them characters and, mm. and sometimes we joke and say that we actually preferred our lives behind the gates <laughs> and quarry <laughs> to, to real life. You don't have to cook, you don't have to clean, yeah. you know, you're so well catered You for just rock up. Job. Yeah. And your clothes are even laid out for you, you get your makeup done, all that. <laughs> Brilliant. So true. <laughs> that sounds good. But um, I really mourned it and I did actually say to my husband, I need to go upstairs because I feel like I've ended a relationship yeah it obviously wasn't a real relationship yeah. but you still have all the feels yeah, of course um and I and I really did I I questioned myself a lot I thought have I done the right thing mm. and coupled with the fact I was eight months pregnant didn't kind of help. <laughs> the hormones um, 
But uh, yeah, I really did mourn that job. Mm. And also it's, it's, it's <clears> such a tragic way in which Kylie left as well, which, you know, that combined with everything else. And you do get lost in it. It, is, it does become so much part of your life. I know personally for me when I was at Emmerdale, th- there was a point where you, you do get used to kind of answering to Kylie to Alicia and you're just mm. like yeah, yeah. And, and and just trying to separate from from that and you've just gone through this horrendous kind of experience of her being stabbed in the street or whatever and you're, you do mourn the character as well and have to kind of that's something I haven't experienced but obviously you have mm-hmm. and that you have to kind of go well we've had a great yeah. ride of it yeah I'd have cried my eyes out. Oh, you must have cried your I eyes did. out. I did. And then you get the odd aeroplane coming over and you're like, cut. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. oh, no. <laughs> yeah, there was all that. As well as a baby kicking me in the ribs oh. while I'm uh, trying to die on the street, which wasn't pleasant. Um, but you know what? I'm so grateful for that ending. When they told me what was going to happen, um, it was very much sort of stated that um, it was going to be clear cut and um, I wouldn't need to go back. And, you know, they, they had it all in the workings. People ask me more so now. Yeah. Do you regret leaving? Like, you know, um, would you go back, bizarrely? I mean, as how, a ghost, how, how would they ever make that happen? Flashbacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm really grateful for that ending because it gave me the opportunity to, again, showcase another side of mm-hmm. of my acting. And, um, and to have that um, opportunity with Jack was, you know, very rare, I think. Yes, yeah, so your relationship with Jack, yeah, it was very special. And it was something that people really bought into. You know, Kylie and David were amazing. And do you have that as well now where people go, oh, it's not the same without you? Yeah, I can't deny there is a lot of that. Um, people sort of saying to me, oh, I don't watch it anymore. You <laughs> can I say that? Well, you can say it anymore. You can say it, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, my mother as well. She's like, oh, it hasn't never been the same. Oh, um, yes, of course, she's my number one fan, isn't she? Yeah. Um, but I had a fabulous six years there mm. and I learned so much and, you know, hopefully it will propel me forward onto onto other things. A hundred percent. Would you do another soap, do you think? In I the would, future? yeah, would I, I absolutely would. Um, even though, you know, it is gruelling, it is hard work. If it was the right role, I'd, I'd certainly consider it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, with all of us, you know, trying to have it all can be so draining. Like, you know, you want to be a professional, you want to be competitive in your industry, but equally you want to be a good mum, you want to be a good wife. All that time when you were away on tour, did you ever have moments of just like real self-doubt of going, what am I doing? All the time. Yeah. You know, I'm always doubting myself. Am I am I um, giving the children enough emotional stability? Um, you know, am I sacrificing too much here? But then I think when it is your passion... That's when I'm happiest. Yeah. There's two things I'm, I'm when I'm most happy. One is when we're all well fed, and the other one is when my phone's ringing. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't one like. Can't quiet. happen without the other, unfortunately. You know, like we've got to eat. I need to work. Yeah. I think I think you just have to think balance all the time. Yeah. You know, and you know what I always say to myself: nobody could do it better. No. Nobody. Mm. Nobody could do my life right now better than what I'm doing. And that carries me through so much. That's an amazing thought because that for me, I would never have thought like that. But when you say it, it's like, actually, that's right. I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like, I'm failing all the time. <laughs> you know. But, but the fact that you, you, you can have that confidence in mm-hmm. the way you're living your life, I think is amazing. And clearly, you know, shows that you've got that tenacity and mm-hmm. to keep going forward. I think I learned a lesson after Penny. You know, I was very much... Um, wanted to have my makeup on after I had the children. I wanted to have the house perfect. I wanted to, you know, to all look really lovely and settled when people came round. And actually, I then came to the realisation that I was only in competition with myself. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. all I was That's all I was doing. Nobody was coming round to judge. Um, and if they were, then, you know. They can go. <laughs> it's, it's an awful situation to it be in. You know, it's when you've had a child nice, and you feel like you've got to be. You almost lose yourself to an, yeah, you know, you to do. an extent. And you, do. you want yourself back and actually... You know, the only person yeah. that you're really doing all that for yeah. is you. Yeah. It's yeah. for you, yeah. yeah. But again, balance is key, isn't it? Really? And how old are your children again? Four and three. So there's a, a very small gap between them. Oh, that's how a small how gap, is isn't how it? was it dealing with two very young children? You know, going from working so fully on Coronation mm-hmm. Street to then being at home with very two very small kids. That must have been such like what Anna said, such a, a shock to the system. Yeah. Um so we have a nineteen month age gap, so um yeah, I think Arthur was 10 months, obviously, yeah, when I got pregnant with Penny. And we we sort of knew that we wanted to have two quite close together because, again, in this game, there's never a right time. <laughs> mm. And I was in work, which was a bonus. 
um, and I was young enough and fit enough to to want to do it again. Um, but it was, yeah, it was really hard having two in nappies. Little oh things goodness, like yeah. getting out of the car <laughs> with a toddler who has no road sense and then battling with a newborn as well. It was it was carnage for a long, <laughs> long time and my back felt absolutely broken. And I remember thinking, wow, this age gap is really intense. It's mm. really hard. But now, let me tell you, it's absolutely sublime. Oh, when they get they a bit are, older and the best friends. They're inseparable. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. They are. It's and worth it, isn't they're it? They're so close. They, re- I mean, they can be really hard work mm. as well. I'm not going to paint them in, you know, you know, <laughs> little angels. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, they're so great. Yeah, um, yeah they, they, they really look after each other. And also, I think, you know, when... When you look at the whole what's meant to be, mm-hmm. they were there for each other when mummy was away working and yeah. I feel like that was meant to happen. Yeah. I was yeah. just going to say that that must have been so lovely for the pair of them to have each other and to, you know, when they've seen you or when they've chatted and go into their own little world and have a little chat about you and where you are and maybe create stories and things like that. That's so lovely for them to have that bonding experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. And they gang up on us. <laughs> you tell one of them off, the other one then starts joining in and sticking up for the other. So it's, Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you don't want it any other way, no, though, really, no. do you? It's so lovely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then when they're older, they'll be like, oh, mum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so are you having some time off over Christmas then? I mean, you've been so busy. You must need a bit of a lie down. Yeah, I think um, I got a lovely call from a voice agent the other day. So I think there might be some voiceover work coming my way, which, you know, is very much welcome. Mm. Um that's not a rest. <laughs> that still works. I was just thinking but that. You have to take it as yeah. it comes, don't yeah. you? Um, but I will certainly be, actually, I want to decorate, which oh. again isn't a rest. But because I've been away from home for so long, I've been used to, I had a lovely lady do my cleaning and stuff. But you know, you want to be in your home and you want to just have it your yeah. way. And I'm just dying to get stuck in again. Your, your house. You're a glutton for punishment, yeah. Paul, aren't I am, you, I really? know, I am, I know. I mean, I've got a cold over Christmas, you'll be thinking, oh, it serves her right. Yeah, because you did. <laughs> but do you think then that because you, you like you said, you, do you function better when you're really busy? Like if you stood still for too long, do you think that you'd be, go a little bit crazy and a little bit like stir crazy? It, do you find sometimes your own, just the sense of yourself a bit like, uh, I don't know what to do now? I think I thrive on my adrenaline. Yeah, I do. But I also know my limit. Right. And I know when I have to stop and when there's like a spa day that's calling or, you know, oh, yeah. a duvet day, sofa <laughs> day, whatever, or even a bath. Mm. Just when the kids have gone to bed, instead of just like sitting on your phone and, or in front of the telly, you know, you just think, actually, do something for yeah, yourself. Yeah, self-care can go yeah, a long way. A little face yeah. mask. Yeah. So I do always know my limit, but I am, and I, I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I'm firing on all cylinders and yeah. I'm embracing that. And you're enjoying it. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure, like my mum always said when I get into my 40s, she went, you'll learn, it'll come to you, that you'll you'll know the signals when you want to just start stepping off a little bit. Mm. In terms of self-care, like, again, I, I, I sound like a stark parlor, <laughs> but because you do use a lot of products, you like products, don't you? What what are your favourite products, like beauty care and, and self-care? Um... I like going down the natural route. Mm-hmm. Uh, the perfect thing for me um, on tour was actually coconut oil. You know, instead of buying the um, the micellar water yeah. in like loads of plastic bottles, a massive tub of coconut oil just mixed with a bit of water is the best way of taking your makeup off. And it's a moisturiser as well. And my oh, skin's yeah. been so much better. Your skin is like, it's lovely, your skin. <laughs> it's because of all the water I've been drinking. <laughs> yeah. um, coconut oil. But I, I really like Murad products as well. Right. Um, because I have suffered with hormonal acne pretty much all the way through, really. There was never a time. Um, I'll get like gaps of like three months where I think, oh, my skin's lovely at the minute, but yeah. a bit of stress kicks in and it's my, you know. That's, that's it, how it shows. Yeah, it's my yeah. weak spot, unfortunately. And it really works for you, that stuff. Mm, yeah, definitely. They've And they've got a, a massive range for sensitive skin, for blemish prone skin. So yeah, that seems to be my uh, yeah go to. And in terms of a spa, have you, where where would you recommend for a? Because this is your area now. <laughs> oh gosh, where do you start? Well, I mean, I've some beautiful spas in Yorkshire, Paula. Yeah, there's. Well, I was at Coniston the other week. That was a oh, really lovely yeah, I saw spa that you day. Were there. Really well priced as well. And they've got this incredible sort of hot tub lovely. overlooking the rolling hills of Yorkshire in the back, mm. which is beautiful, really really nice as well. Yeah, yeah Rudding Park's nice. I got as well. married at yeah. Rudding Park. Did so you? I saw oh. the list pictures. I was like, I want to there go. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. There you see, it's yeah. clearly, clearly yeah. the place. Yeah, yeah. I did. It was, it was quite a long time ago now, though, when I got married. It was like, oh. And okay. when you when you do get to go away with your husband and your kids on a on a family holiday, what, what type of holidays do you like to go on? 
We've kind of flipped. Okay. We've done the whole package holiday thing and, and actually we probably did it at the wrong time when the kids were young, but of course they're free on a plane, so that's what you go to, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You want the free seat. There is some value in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? Being on tour has taught me that there's so many wonderful places in this country to go. And in a lot of ways, they're happier. Mm. They're yeah. so much happier they when you're not mothering sun them a, cream a on them. And, and, uh, spade and a they beach don't somewhere. care as long as you're together. Mm. And um, we've had some wonderful um, experiences. Whereabouts did you did you really enjoy on tour? Edinburgh was oh, a oh, highlight it's a for me. City. It's and a I remember city, saying yeah. to one of the girls, um, "I wanted to get the kids up off this seat, and it's a fair climb." Yeah, only my penny was two and a half. Oh. And uh, one of the girls in the company said, "You won't get them up there," and I said, "I will." <laughs> That's the Yorkshire girl <laughs> in there. Yeah, and Penny made it up there. Yeah, we even took it. We we even had a potty with us. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, how did you? What did you pack it in a rucksack? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, Paula laid in a <laughs> potty in a rucksack. Oh yeah, <laughs> and, and a helium balloon because obviously it was Arthur's third birthday, oh, fourth birthday. Sorry. It's amazing what will get him up a hill. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's been uh, some wonderful highlights. Um, you know, places that we we've been together. So, yeah, I feel really lucky to have had that. And before we have to go, um, what's next for Paula? What would you like to do? I want to keep my arms open to lots of things. Um, I want to go back to TV if I can, Mm -hmm. uh, showcase a different side of me. But you know what? Being on the stage has taught me actually that I can do that as well. So maybe a a lovely little play somewhere, maybe at the Royal Exchange or I don't know. That would be nice. Yeah, Yeah. I'm I'm just keeping my options open right now. Well, sadly, we've run out of time again. I can see our producer, Alex, there tapping her watch in the studio. Don't worry, we're finished. My tea's done now. Can you just give us a Kyle and Claire <laughs> before you go? Oh, oh it looks good. Lovely. Oh, it's Oh, fabulous. <laughs> and with that, then, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the gorgeous Paula mm-hmm, Lane for being you. our amazing guest today. We have absolutely loved having you. It's, oh, it's been, been brilliant. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Paula. And as always, we hope you've had a, a great time at home. We've had a great time in the studio. So whether you've been watching or whether you've been listening, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can visit all of our content at the website, www.thecapsule.co.uk. And we will be back very soon with another special guest for more The Capsule in Conversation with. Bye for now. Bye. 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 <laughs>